I think we'll start away with some leg stretching in the strap. But first we'll tune into breaths. So first couple breaths, you can sit, you can lie down. So find the optimal position for you. That brings your mind to your breath. That allows you to simultaneously slow and grow the breath. while opening up to the other sensations in your body. So these first few minutes of quiet allow the body to get information from the body. There's no need for you to figure out what's going on or try to name it. This is a feeling process. The body will learn how to feel its way into and out of the different shapes we do. And each shape we make is the same container as this, centering the mind on the breath. So the body can process all the physical sensations that arise from the particular stresses we're putting on the tissues, the chemical process that accompanies it, the emotional process. Using the breath as a way not to grapple with the process or to check out, but to stay present. We'll continue to cultivate that feeling presence as you find your yoga strap and lie down on your back. And I want you to lie on your back in a way that your sacrum, the back of your pelvis is firmly planted and the back bottom ribs are heading towards the mat. So for some of us, that means lifting the head onto a flat pillow or a folded blanket. Because as we start to try to unwind the tissues in the back of the leg, the glutes and the hips, the pelvis will compensate by starting to curl up. You'll feel the back of the pelvis lift up. So every once in a while, just without forcing, no abrupt movements, just feel for the sacrum once again, getting heavy into the mat. There is a way to do this if we were being really formal, where you would push your standing foot into a wall. If you were in a position where you know that how to do that, you can do that. We'll start before we, we'll have the strap handy, hug your right knee to your chest holding on to whatever you can, whether it's the knee or the thigh behind the knee. Just make some small circles, get some breath 
into the stew you're stirring up in the right hip socket. Breath as if adding fluid to any crunchiness, crackliness you might find. Reverse the circles. And set the right foot down, hug left knee to chest. Same process, circle the left knee a few times. Start real small. So you can feel and next breath in. And a few circles in the other direction. So the crackly crunchy should get a little bit smoother, but sometimes there are tendons and tissues that make that repetitive pop. If we move into movements where you feel it just keeps popping every time, I want you to either slow or make the movement smaller, modify in a way that doesn't irritate those tissues. So it doesn't repetitively pop. All right, again, right knee to chest. This time let's put the strap around the sole of the right foot, right leg to sky. If anyone joined later, before I cue you to get a strap, just grab anything that you can hook. There you go. Let's start with a little foot massage. So the right knee might not be all the way straight yet. Feel the sacrum heavy on the mat, the tailbone untucked. And go ahead, if you can, rub your strap briskly side to side across the sole of the foot. St stimulating these thousands and thousands and thousands of nerve endings. Really sensitive stuff that figure out how to keep us on our feet throughout the day, no matter what kind of terrain we're moving through without constantly falling down. You know, sometimes falling down, but probably not constantly. So get all the way to the heel and all the way to the toes. And yet these are some of our first nerve endings to die off because they're so far away from the heart and gravity doesn't help. So here we're reversing that. All right, settle with the strap right around the middle of the foot holding onto the two ends of the strap, relax your arms completely and start drawing small circles with your foot on the ceiling. Again, starting small so you can feel for smoothing the circles out, smoothing the movement out and mix your breath into the movement. Sacrum heavy, pelvis fairly steady. So figure out how to use your low abdominals without creating tension. You know, the jaw, the teeth will try to grit to, to still things down. Relax the jaw. Maybe open the mouth or let the teeth fall. All right, circle in the other direction if you haven't already. And finish with right leg centered over hip. Hold the straps in your right hand. Put your left hand on your left hip bone. Relax the left elbow shoulder down. Let's flex the right foot. Flex the foot, turn the toes out and exhale. Lower your right toes towards the ground, somewhere beyond right hip, right shoulder, just as far as you can go without tipping. When you think you're there, pick your leg up an inch and then press the left hip down. Get the left side body back on the ground. Pull your belly in. Whether you keep the foot flexed, pointed, or the active foot variation where we flex toes boy out and reach out through ball of foot. Put some energy in the foot to lengthen the inner leg line from the pelvis. Again, leg does not have to be all the way straight here. And left hand comes over to take hold of the strap so you can use your arms to pull your leg back up to center. Your hip can stay relaxed. Abdominals help. All right, hold the straps in your left hand, slide your right hand into your hip crease. So right in that hip bone where the thigh bone's coming out, the hand, blade of hand should fit really well. Flex the right foot, turn the toes towards the left shoulder, and then just bring the leg maybe an inch or two past the center line so you feel the whole outer leg line 
light up, right hip still flat on the mat. The more you turn the toes down, the heel up to the ceiling, the more you'll hit that outer leg line. If you soften the knee a little, that's more IT band. If you straighten, it's more the outer hamstrings. And then roll all the way onto your left side if you have space. Let the right foot come down to the ground in a spinal twist. If you like, right arm can open to the right, or you can keep it on your hip. Then bring that right hand back over to the straps. Use your arms and your abdominals to inhale back onto your back. Exhale, right leg over to the right. This time the foot can come all the way to the floor. If it feels safe to your low back, you can roll off the left hip onto right hip. And then left hand comes to the straps and carries your big leg up and over to the other side. And we'll take a few breaths in this moment, just using your arms, the strap to move your leg. Tick tock, side to side, massaging back body side to side. If your body wants a smaller movement, well, small movement works great. This is about breathing and feeling. Four more full breaths. If you find a place you want to stay and breathe, do that. This is part of our meditation. And when you've evened out this last round, finish with the right leg back up to the sky. Left leg straight or bent, but untuck the tail, sacrum flat on the earth. We'll add a little PNF here. Hold on to both straps. Press ball foot into the straps. Inhale. Keep pressing the foot into the straps as you pull on the straps, like 20% of your strength. Like you're trying to slam your right foot down to the ground, but your strap is strong and you're really not fighting, it's not a lot of effort. Take a breath. Exhale, stop pressing. Hug the thigh towards you. Knee as soft as you like. Two more times like that. Inhale, press foot into straps. Resist with your hands on the strap. Pull your belly down, press the tail down. Take a breath. Exhale, stop pressing, soften in. One more time, inhale, press, press. Press, press, pull belly down, relax jaw, keep the chin in towards throat. Exhale, stop pressing. Support your leg with the straps as you lower your straight leg all the way down to the ground. Once your heel touches down, let go straps. Maybe take a 10 second Shavasana just to feel the difference in the two sides of the body. And then we'll set up side number two. Strap around left foot, left leg straight to sky. Start with your foot massage. Rub, rub briskly. Stimulating those nerves, flushing out the tissue, all the dead cell matter that gets stuck down there. Let it get flushed back. Fresh nutrients are returned. And once everything's nice and warm and tingly from heel out to toes, finish with the straps right in the middle of your foot. Hold on with your left hand, put your right hand on your hip for balance. Flex the left foot, turn the toes out to the left. Lead with your big toe as you lower left foot towards the ground. You might keep a bend in your knee. Just going as far as you can go before you start to tip and your leg is heavy so you will tip. Pull on the straps to lift the leg back up an inch and then press right hip down. Feel the right shoulder ribs heavy. Pull your belly in just enough to stabilize your spine. Send breath into the inner leg line. Active foot reaches, reaches, long leg from hip. Right hand comes over to the straps. Use your arms and your abdominals to pull the leg up to center. 
This time, slip your left hand into the hip crease, flex the left toes, turn them toward your right shoulder, and then move the leg one or two inches across center line. Take a few breaths there. And exhale, lower your leg all the way to the ground if that feels right to you, rolling onto your right hip in a spinal twist. You can extend right arm to the right if you're ready or keep right hand on hip. Knee can bend a lot here. And bring your left hand over to the strap so you can use your arms and your abdominals to pull up. And then left arm can follow the strap, all the leg all the way to the left. This time it's fine if you roll onto the left side. And then right hand comes and pulls the leg back over to the other side. Rocking back and forth, your range of motion, your meditation. Sensing a sense of gooeyness, whether you actually feel that in your actual tissues or maybe you just feel that in your breath. I like using for the strap this for even for those of us who can reach our feet because external support allows those things that are always trying to hold us together to relax physically and mentally. And when the side feels complete, finish with left leg back to center, holding onto the straps, one in each hand. Flatten your sacrum onto the mat. That should lighten up the load of the low back. You can pull your belly in so you're not straining the low back. With like 20% of your strength, start pressing your foot into the straps and pull on the straps. Continue your breath. Take a big breath in. Exhale, stop pressing, soften in. Again, inhale, press foot into straps, straps into foot. Breathing. Heating up, but no sharp pains, please. Exhale, stop pressing, soften. One more time, inhale, press, 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 press. Untuck the tail, engage the navel. Foot can be active as you press. And exhale, relax. All right, lower your left leg all the way down with the support of the strap. And then watch heel touches down. You can let go of straps, take a mini Shavasana. Now let's find our way up to our seats. Okay. Do extended leg seated side bend. Right leg straight. Toes flex up to the sky. Now, even though we just did a lot of leg work or because we did a lot of leg work, you might feel this is a lot of stretch in the back of the leg. If you need to sit up on something, and if you're sitting up high enough that your knee feels slightly hyperextended or at all pressure in the back of the knee, put something underneath your knee. 
So get relatively comfortable and then put some energy in the right leg, toes pointing up to the sky. Left knee, some of you like to do hurdler's lunge. You can do hurdler's lunge if you want. Re inhale, right arm up. Exhale, lean sideways to the inside of right leg. Relax the right arm down. Start with left arm behind back. Inhale, widen through the collarbones. Exhale, ease the left shoulder blade down away from neck as you release your head towards the right shoulder. So release for some bodies, that means hang the head and that feels yummy. For me, it's a slower process of gradually relaxing the tissues on the tight left side of neck. So not necessarily hanging. You find what works for you. Neck release. Reach left arm out to the left, palm facing earth. And you can play with the angle of that arm until you feel just the right traction through left side of neck that allows you to continue that organic release under the watchfulness of your breath. And either stay right there or reach left arm to sky, turn the palm towards your head or even keep spinning so the pinky blade of arm starts to face head and reach to the right. I'm less concerned with coming down than with opening up left side body. Huge breath, wherever you're feeling most traction, everything from hips up through neck is involved here. So you focus where it feels nourishing to you. Where you're feeling change and response. And then leave the neck relax as you lower the left hand down. Pull your belly in. Right hand will come to your face to help you guide your head back on. Spinal twist. Bend the right knee, move slow. That was abrupt for me. Right foot on the floor, crossed or uncrossed, I'll leave that up to you. If you want to straighten the left leg out, by all means, straighten it out. Twist to your right. Gaze anywhere that continues to unwind your neck. So if you want to look over shoulder, that's good, but it's not necessary. Plug pubic bone down to the ground. Inhale, scoop the low belly in and off your pubic bone. Exhale, ease the shoulders back towards each other. Unwind your twist. Straighten the left leg out. Left toes flex up to sky. Right knee open in a half straddle or a hurdler's lunge. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, side bend to your left, right arm behind back. Inhale, lift the chest slightly so you can broaden and rotate open. Exhale, relax the right shoulder down. Relax your neck and jaw. Reach right arm out to the right, palm facing earth. And feel for just the right angle on this side of the neck. There's lots of areas to seek out tension in the neck. You find a sweet spot for you. Either stay in this shape, continue to wash the tension out of neck or reach the right arm to sky, turn palm towards head and exhale. Either reach straight up or start to reach towards foot as a way to open right side body. One more slow, full breath into the hottest area in the right side. On the exhale, sense it draining. Leave your neck released as you lower the right hand down. Ease yourself up. 
If you're okay with touching your face these days, left hand helps put your head on your spine. And then set up for your spinal twist with the left foot on the floor. And again, whatever you do with the right leg, I'll leave up to what feels right to you. Both sitting bones planted. Twist to your left. Once you set up the twist, rather than thinking of trying to spin around, think of lifting the rib cage off the hips as you breathe in and continue to spiral up with the out breath. Inhale, exhale, release the twist. And we'll come onto our backs for abdominals. If you have a yoga block, grab it. We'll do twisting abs at the block. Or if you prefer to hold a yoga roll between your thighs, you can roll up a blanket or towel or a throw pillow. If you don't have anything to handy, you actually don't need a prop for this. I just like the way it connects us to our legs. So a roll would look something like this, something eh, about the size of a block that when you put it between your thighs, keeps your legs hips width apart. If you're using a foam block, put that between your calves. So legs straight up the sky, any position, holding your prop either between your thighs or your calves. If it's something soft, you'll probably squish it between your thighs. If you're using no prop, legs, Feet right over your hips, squeeze an imaginary roll between your thighs or pillow. Twisting abs of the block. Interlace hands behind your head and neck. That looks good, Vicky. Active feet, press balls of feet up like you're trying to stand tippy toe on the ceiling and look for space between all 10 toes. Inhale, curl your head and shoulders off the mat. Keep the knees right over the hips. They'll start to come into your elbows. I want you to keep them forward. Exhale, twist both elbows towards the right thigh. Pull your belly down. It's a tiny twist. Even the right elbow is reaching for right thigh, so maybe right shoulder can stay off earth. Inhale, center, keep the shoulders up. Squeeze your block, tuck the tailbone into the body. Exhale, twist to the left, pull your belly down. Inhale, center, keep your shoulders up. Gently press the head into the hands. Make sure the throat is relaxing. Exhale, twist to right, squeeze block, pull your belly down. Inhale, center, press the low back into mat. Exhale, twist left, hugging block, send it to sky, pull belly down. Inhale, center, one more round. Exhale, twist right, pull belly down. Pull the sides of the waist down, reach. Curl the tailbone up if that feels okay to your back. Inhale, center, press balls of feet up, hug your block, tuck your tail, exhale, twist left. Draw navel to spine, spine into mat. Last piece, inhale, center, flex the feet, pull the toes back towards you, make sure all 10 toes are coming straight back. Squeeze block, tuck tail, exhale, elbow straight up to the ceiling. Like you're the human letter U, reaching up through your heels, reaching up through your elbows and pulling your belly down. Inhale, head down, feet down. Let's come into cannonball right away. You can keep your prop between your legs if you can't put knees together. Knees bent like you're in a chair. If you can squeeze knees together, then do that. Place your palms on your thighs. Inhale, press low back, flat into the mat. And here's another one where you use like 20% of your strength. Exhale, press palms into thighs, thighs into palms, draw navel to spine. Keep the belly in, keep the sides of the waist down, breathe up into the ribs by your shoulder blades, feel them spread out on your mat. Exhale, keep sustaining the pressure, palms into thighs, thighs into palms, squeeze sitting bones towards tail. Everything from the belly button down is full of energy. Relax your face and jaw. 
Exhale, relax that pressure. Hug your knees into your chest. Spinal twist. Drop your knees over to the left. Here's another place where you can still hold your prop between th thighs to take some of the pull out of your low back. And then bring your knees up and over to the other side. Then keep rolling onto your side to crawl to all fours. Dolphin or dolphin prep. Come down onto your elbows, wrap your hands around your arms halfway between the elbow and shoulder, fingers right around your triceps. We'll pull the elbows in so they're right under the shoulder socket. I want you to keep your elbows in that close, maybe even closer, no wider, unless you have a shoulder injury that tells you not to do that. Either clasp the hands in front of you or place your palms on your yoga mat and try to keep the hands wide as you try to keep the elbows narrow. So the forms are parallel to each other, like train tracks. Press down into the earth with your flat wrists, with your elbows, your forearms. Lift out of your shoulders. Exhale. Relax your neck. As you press the ground away and hug the elbows in, lean your hips up and back like a down dog spine. So you're stretching back out of your engaged shoulders. Some of you will tuck your toes. Breathe in. And exhale. Knees off the mat as a way to use your legs to keep pulling the hips back, the spine back from your shoulders. If you feel yourself dumping forward into your shoulders, either keep the knees very bent or on the mat, and then push the earth away. Next day's relax. Head will try to get itself off the earth. Let it dangle. It's okay if it touches. Breathe the back ribs out. Exhale, hug the low belly in as you reach back. Use your abdominals. Some people like to say, knit the front ribs together. I find that makes it hard to breathe, but if it works for you, do that. Good. One more full breath. Exhale, embryo pose, lower your knees down. If child's pose is safe for your knees, sit back on your heels and bring your hands by your feet to relax your shoulders. If anything about this pose doesn't feel safe to let go in, find a shape to let go in. Maybe roll onto your back. All right, find your way up to standing. Turn your ujjayi breath back on if you, if your breath got sleepy in child's pose. Standing Ardha Chandrasana variation. Stand, inhale. Stand with your feet parallel to each other, whether you bring the feet together to touch or leave them right under your hips, I'll leave up to you. Arms up, catch your left wrist. If it feels safe for your shoulder, turn the palm in toward your head, the thumb back, and exhale side bend to your right. Relax your head onto the right shoulder. Use your right arm to traction left arm bones, left side body out. Press inner feet down, but lift your arches. Inhale, center, change sides. Take the right wrist, turn the palm in from the shoulder. We call that wrapping the shoulder where the shoulder blade comes around, stabilizes it. And exhale, relax head to left. Traction the right arm out, press your feet down. 
Spread the back bottom ribs out and up. Good. And then if it feels right to you, exhale, draw the right arm back behind, over your ear a little more. Inhale, center, exhale, release. Twisting horse, separate your feet three feet apart, turn your toes out, bend your knees, sit down on your horse. Palms on your thighs, lock your elbows out, inhale. Actually, you don't have to lock your elbows out here. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, chest towards right thigh. Press the left thigh open. Inhale, center. It might feel right to tuck your tail. Exhale, twist to left. One more time to each side. Inhale, center. Lengthen spine. Exhale, chest towards right thigh. Left thigh back. Inhale, center. Exhale, lean your chest left. Press right thigh open. Inhale, center. Exhale, forward fold. Turn the toes in, hands to the ground. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. As you release into this first forward fold, you may want to bend and straighten your knees. You may want to sway a little bit. This can be pretty gooey. All right, Agni Sara, inhale to a flat back. Bring your hands to your waist. You may bend your knees and tuck your tail a lot to support your back as you come up. Inhale. Turn the toes back out. Bend your knees. This time either three, two rounds. Two rounds Udiana or two rounds Agni Sara. This time we will lock elbows out so you can relax your belly, but your spine stays straight. Udiana, I'll talk through slow. Most of you guys know this. If you want to go ahead into your Udiana Agni Sara practice, go for it. We'll take a big breath in. Blow it out. Hold it out. <sighs> hold your breath out. Tuck your chin. Draw navel to spine. And then try to fly your abdominals up into your rib cage. What we're literally doing is lifting the diaphragm up beyond its relaxation point. So it looks kind of like this. <sighs> holding up to eight seconds. So when you breathe out, you do have to soften the belly to pull it in, but then you'll re-lengthen the spine to fly the diaphragm. So if you're new to Udiana, do that maybe two or three times, unless you just ate lunch. Don't do that to your lunch. If you just ate lunch, do back traction instead. Just press hands into thighs and work your spine long. Agni Saras, that's where you do Udiana, but you pump it. Awesome. And after your last round, come back into Tadasana. Feet parallel to each other, right under hips or together. Half sun salute. Let's do half sun with Utkatasana. Inhale, sit back in your chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Back into chair. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastiti. Push with your heels to stand up. Again, like that. Inhale, sit back. And I do mean stick your butt back. Knees, try to stay over ankles. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Sit back. Exhale, Samastitihi. Either two more like that, or you can take a full sun salute. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Here's the choice. Exhale, step back into plank and lower down, or exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, upper dog, cobra, if you chose the plank. Inhale, utkatasana, if you're still standing. Exhale, samastitihi, or downward dog. Down dog, stay and take a breath. Inhale, utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Down dogs, come forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Everyone, inhale, utkatasana. Exhale, samastiti. Hip hiking. Stand with your feet, hips width apart. Put your hands on your hips. Feel left hip, right hip, the same height. Rock the weight back to your heels just a little bit. And then get a little scoop of the lowest part of your belly off your pubic bones. So you're engaged. We'll push down with the right foot and try to float the left foot up, keeping the leg straight. You'll feel the left hip come up. Just like that, Vicky, good. Yes. So you're kind of pinching the waist to do that action, pinch. We're using both the obliques and the QL along your spine in the back, kind of to get your leg up. Drive the right leg down to help. A couple more times on this side. So if you're feeling a lot of crunching in the back, then I want you to scoop your belly up, drop your chest down so you're getting the side and front muscles too. All right, switch sides, push your left heel down, crunch the right side up. And for a couple rounds, just switch sides, left and right and left. You might feel things firming up if you're holding onto your waist. Keep breathing. All right, back to center. Surya Namaskar B. Maybe two rounds, maybe just one. Come back to the front of your mat into Dasana. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, either step back into down dog or take your plank chaturanga. Down dog, stay. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Warrior one, step your right foot up to your right thumb. Ground your back heel so your toes are angled out 45 degrees and then push down with your feet to rise. One breath up. Exhale back down to the earth. Either step back into down dog or plank chaturanga. Down dogs, take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Left foot. Step towards left thumb, spin the back heel down and use your feet to rise. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the ground. Down dog or plank chaturanga. Breathe in, breathe out. Neck either relaxed or you can tuck your chin, gaze towards navel. Twisting lunge, right foot forward, back knee down. You can set your knees down first if you like and then step the right foot forward. Twist variations, either bring left elbow on or cross right thigh. Classically, hands are usually in prayer. I like to enforce yoga, we make a fist with the left hand so we can keep the wrist straight and then press off with the top palm to open the chest and save our wrists for all the down dogs and whatnot. If your spine would prefer that the left hand be on the floor or a block at this point in your practice, listen to it. Whichever variation you're in, take a breath to feel for lifting the left ribs up out of your armpit. That's it. And then exhale, keep lifting your chest as you spiral. I shouldn't say lift the chest, widen the chest. Looking down can be helpful for balancing if 
this is a balanced pose, so steady gaze. Lunge, hands down. Some of you will scooch the left knee back a little bit for a broader lunge. Spread the back toes, lift and spread the front toes, arms to hands to thigh or arms to sky, your choice. Feel for dropping tailbone down, breathe the back ribs up. Good, I see a lot more space in your low back, Cynthia. Yeah, if you want to push arms back, so you can keep the low back spacious. Don't push into low back. Mm. Pyramid. Exhale, hands down. Come onto the left foot, toes angled out. Again, 30, 45 degrees. Feet eh, about three feet apart for your one-legged forward fold over the right leg. If you want to put your hands on blocks, find your blocks so you can lengthen the spine. With all hamstrings demanding shapes, I'm not concerned with straightening that stretched leg at all. If you can feel your hamstrings, they are working. Inhale, lift and lengthen a little. Spin your belly a little bit more towards right big toe. And then exhale, soften back in. Your choice whether you hang the head or keep your gaze slightly towards the right toes. Whatever feels neutral to your neck. Utita Trikonasana. If you're using blocks, we'll use a block here. If not, you don't have to. Inhale to a flat spine. Pull your belly and ribs in so your torso is parallel to earth. Then if you're using a block, put it the tall way inside your right ankle and bring left hand to hip. If you're not using a block, put your right hand somewhere on your right leg. That doesn't feel like a strain. Somewhere, but not the kneecap. And then start to press your right hip underneath you as you spin open to the left. Option, left arm can reach across from right or it can stay on your hip for steadiness. And use your feet in this pose. Press the ball mound of the right foot forward into the mat as you tuck your right sitting bone underneath you. If that feels okay to hamstrings. All right, everyone bring left hand to hip. See if you can find that protruding bone in your hip, push down on it, that'll pull you up. You can bend the right knee, inhale. Widen your stance into warrior two. Bring your block with you, I'm sorry. Bring your block with you if you have it. If not, you'll use an invisible block. Make sure it's a foam block. I don't want you to try to hold a cork block here. Hold your block directly out in front of your chest in warrior two. Between your two palms, outstretched fingers, so not a lot of effort in the hand, that's it. And then breathe the back ribs up, lengthen back of spine. Exhale, send your block towards sky without dipping into your low back at all. So you might see at one point your back is going to try to help your arms get the block up. Rewind, drop the chest, lift the back ribs and lengthen the arms. See if you can keep them straight, reaching up, up out of shoulders. And release the block to the floor. Eagle arms right on top of left. Getting the biceps across right on top of left. If you can get the wrists across to you, that's cool. If you feel like you're straining, put your hands on your shoulders instead. And if your shoulders are healthy, lift the elbows forward and up. Exhale, release the arms, hands to hips, straighten your right leg. Turn the right toes in, so you're back in prasarita facing side of mat. They might want to be a little closer together if you're feeling your knees. Option, interlace hands behind your back, squeezing shoulders. And option to forward fold in that shape. You might choose to stay upright, or you might choose to forward fold without the bind. And if your hands are not bound with your shoulders back, your hands are on the ground, then still roll the shoulders back. Right. 
And if you're bound, I recommend letting your hands touch your sacrum and then release down your legs to the earth. For most shoulders, that feels good. Flank stretch. Let's do windmilling triangle first. I'm sorry. If you have, if your block fell nearby, you can use it. Put it right underneath your chest, hands on your block, or you can put fingertips on the floor. Send your tailbone straight back, breathe the back ribs out and turn to your right, right arm opens. Exhale, pull your belly in, come back to center. Inhale, the back ribs out, turn left. Exhale, pull low belly in center. Do that up to two more times to each side. Just like those of you in class yesterday, using the in-breath to flush the obliques when we we're lying on the ramp, same thing here. And when you complete your last round, we'll transition into lunge towards left foot. So it's right for you to just walk your hands to the left and lower the right knee down, do that. I know some of you have to stand up and turn around, keep breathing. None of this has to be choreographed. Twist right elbow, left thigh, or mirror the twist you chose on side one, if it wasn't this one. And again, if you like to do the forced yoga hands, fist with the right hand, no bend in the wrist. Watch out for the wrist bending. Then you can put pressure on that hand to open up. Exhale, release your hands down. Square your hips, pull your right hip back a little bit if it dropped, maybe scooch the right knee back. Anjani Asana, lunge, hands to thigh or arms to sky. And to feel tailbone like a plumb line, dropping straight down. So rather than push it down, feel for lifting your lowest abdominals up off your left thigh. Lift your spine from the inside. Hands, if you're using your hands, can help that, that back traction sensation. Good. Pyramid, Parshvatanasana, hands down. Adjust the right foot forward slightly. For your one-legged forward fold, you might come out of the pose so you can find your blocks. Blocks or something to put your hands on are a wonderful way to figure out how to use the unwinding hamstrings to also unwind your spine. Moving into Uttita Trikonasana, inhale, pull your belly in, your lowest ribs in as a way to lift and lengthen your spine. If you're using a block, put it inside the inner part of left ankle. You might have learned it the other way. There's not a wrong way to do that. Right hand to hip. As you peel the right hip back, tuck the left sitting bone under, and maybe right arm to sky. Yes, yeah, some of you will need to turn your right toes out a little bit. Bring your right hand to your hip to press your hip in, bend your left knee, warrior two. Bring your block with you if you come up, but only if you're using a foam block, if it's a heavy block. I'd use the invisible block instead. Hold the block out in front of your chest, scoop your low belly up, breathe the back ribs out. Exhale, send your block to the sky without bending backwards at all. Feel for lifting the block up from your side ribs getting taller, the sides of your waist. Release the block down, eagle arms. Left crosses over right, 
can either finish with hands on shoulders or double bind at the wrist. Exhale, unwind your arms, hands to hips, straighten your left leg, turn the toes in. Either keep your hands on your waist or interlace hands on your back with the other thumb on top, if you can figure out which one that is. Inhale, choose to stay upright or exhale, forward fold. If you're forward folding hands on waist, you can keep your hands on your waist and squeeze shoulders back. It's a nice way to learn how to lengthen back of neck. Well, I wouldn't say nice. It's not a nice pose. I find it a strenuous one. Mentally more than physically. All right, exhale, release your hands to the ground. Inhale to a flat back. Heel toe your feet a little closer together and end up with the heels in, toes out. Bend your knees into spider. And from spiders, some of you guys will dance your way to the ground through a squat. Some of you will put your hands down, lower your knees down, and sit down. Cross-legged seat right in front of left. Or you can choose square pose, right shin on left, or half lotus, right heel, left hip for your forward fold. So any of those seats. Baddha Konasana also works. You'll just repeat Baddha Konasana when we do the second side. And reach back through your tail, pull your low belly in to pull your spine up. Change the cross of your legs, left foot in front or on the right leg. And as always, forward fold might be letting the head bow. And if you're paying attention, you'll feel how just releasing the neck echoes all the way down, low back, hips, and legs. Some of you will lock your arms out so you're not moving into the deepest place you can be. It's not always the place you need to be. Reach back through tail, pull your belly in to come up. It is 129. I know some of you have to go right at 130. So we can bow out here. Those of you who have time to rest, I'll stay for a couple of minutes so you can take a shavasana. So come into a comfortable position where you can. Any position really works. Classically, we lie flat on our backs in corpse pose. But if you're on your side or belly down or in a shape where your spine is straight, Really, we just need the spinal cord to be neutral, everything else in a position where you can let it be, where you feel supported by the ground below.
As always, you may choose to continue to rest where you are. Let my voice move into the background with the rest of the background sounds. Those of you coming up can use my voice like a rope to pull you into the present. As you turn up your breath, move your fingers and your toes. A full body stretch sounds yummy. Reach the arms up overhead. Stretch hands away from feet. Maybe flex and point to your feet. Open your mouth and stretch your jaw with a yaw. And then I recommend curling up onto your side to come up, but you come up in a way that's easy for you. Palms together, thumbs against your sternum, lift your chest, bow your head to your own heart. And from this place, we bow to each other. Namaste. Namaste.